Hey guys, welcome to another overclocking tutorial today with the X99S Empower from MSI in combination with the Core i7 5820K 6 core CPU which has a stock clock of 3.3 GHz and you can also see I'm using a 16 GB memory in total uh, split up in 4 modules with 4 GB each. You can also see my BIOS version here which should be quite old so actually I should update the BIOS before this tutorial so in case you have the same old BIOS version you should consider updating your BIOS before you follow the steps I'm doing here. First of all you can see the hardware monitor here on the right. Uh, yeah I'm using the Noctua NHD15 CPU cooler for this tutorial which is a quite strong CPU cooling unit. In case you have a smaller or not so sufficient uh, CPU cooler you might have to consider to change the CPU uh, the curve here, uh, yeah, to change maybe this, um, the fan to run at higher speed to get a little bit lower temperature. All right, so let's go to OC on the left. And first of all, X99 is a little bit uh, difficult when it comes to memory clocking. So the first thi thing we will do is load the XMP profile. And you can see that I'm using uh, 3200 megahertz modules and yeah the, the problem is that the, B, the base clock changed from 100 to 171.42 which is something my mainboard doesn't like at all the problem is if you set this one to 100 which is the stock clock of the BCIK you can see the DRAM frequency will only go up to 2666 but my memory is capable of 3200 so obviously we want to have more than the 2666 that's why we have to change the p-clock yeah i advise to change this one to uh, 125 because 100 to 125 is one divider so the real b-clock will still be 100 so it doesn't affect anything like the pci express clock and now you can see if you alter the dram frequency you can easily hit around 3000 with 2400 um, yeah, memory divider. So yeah, that's the basic um, setting we will use for this tutorial. And now we will clock the CPU to around 4.2 GHz. And of course you can use the same tutorial for different CPUs like the i7 5930K or 5960X 8 core CPU. It's all the same procedure, all the same settings, uh, just a different CPU. So all right, uh, yeah, we will need to change the CPU ratio. So we will set around 34 here, yeah, which will result in 4,251 megahertz. And we will also change the CPU ratio mode from dynamic to fixed mode, so it always stays the same. Now we have the ring ratio. The ring is one part in the CPU which actually connects the cache of your CPU also with the core and with some parts of the memory. The ring clock will give you some more performance if you increase it, but the problem is that the ring, rate, uh, the ring uh, frequency is not only dependent on the CPU, it's also dependent on the motherboard. So if you have, for example, a mainboard without OC socket, like this one, you cannot go above, let's say, 3.7 gigahertz. Yeah, so we have to change this one to around 26, which will be 3250 megahertz, which is totally fine on this mainboard. Yeah, you can maybe try to go one or two dividers up, but yeah, won't be able to do much more, I think. Now we have to change some voltages. The VCC in voltage is the voltage which is delivering, uh, yeah, which the mainboard is delivering to the CPU directly. This means the mainboard doesn't really produce the real core voltage, it only produces the input voltage. So. This is the voltage uh, from the mainboard to the CPU and we will change this one to 1.9 volt and the CPU will transfer this voltage internally to the core voltage for example. So now we have to change the CPU core ring voltage to override mode and change this one to 1.275 which should be an average good value for the clock we will use and also adjust the CPU ring voltage to around 1.15 volt which should also work. Here you also have the CPU uh, system agent and the input output voltage. Those two will help you with memory clocking. So in case you want to use higher memory frequencies, it could be that you have to adjust those two. Usually it's fine to leave them on auto. Like in this tutorial, I checked it before. Auto is totally fine for me for 3000 megahertz on the memory. But in case you want to clock higher, you might have to change those two. 
yeah, values you should consider would be around 1.15 uh, volt to 1.25 volt on both of those. The last thing we have to change is the DRAM, freak, uh, the DRAM voltage. You can see my memory wants 1.35 volt and the stock value is 1.20. So we change those two and that's it. Now you actually have the whole settings you need for overclocking. The last thing we will do is go back with escape and to the OC profile to save the settings we just did, maybe profile three and save it here. So that's it, now hit F10 and we will go to Windows and check the stability of the system. All right, so we just entered Windows and now we will take a look on the CPU spec by opening CPU Z. Yeah, for the whole testing procedure, you need CPU Z, Core Temp and Prime 9 5 You can find the link in the description. And before we take a look on the specs, we actually take a look on the power saving options. So open the power saving options and here you can see the power plan. For example, usually you have balanced as option and there's also high performance. You can see balance, which is the normal option. You can see the CPU multiplier and the CPU clock is changing. Um, this is just if you don't have uh, any load on the CPU, then the CPU will clock down to save some energy. If you don't want that, if you want to have the full power all the time, simply change this one to high performance and it will always stay on the full clock. Okay, now open core temp to check the temperature of your CPU during the load. Open Prime95 and change the parameters uh, to custom and 1344 here, same here and check run FFTs in place. After running, you can see that the load increased to 100% here on all cores and you can also see the temperature drastically uh, increased. As long as you stay below 90 or 95 degrees on load, it's totally fine because no game will put such a high load on your CPU like Prime95 does. So if this setup is running one hour stable for you and it stays below 90 or 95 degrees, it's totally good and you overclocked your system successfully. If you have any, any trouble, uh, for example, one worker is crapping out, so you have some errors, it could be that it's not stable and you have to increase the core voltage to get the clock stable. You can only do that if you have enough room in the temperature left. If you don't have any room in temperature left, it could be that you have to clock down maybe to 4100 megahertz. All right, uh, yeah, that's it for now. If you have any questions about uh, the specific overclocking on this mainboard or just X99 in general, just drop a comment in the uh, comment section. All right, thanks.